Hey guys, this is Mike, and today I am at a sort of a semi-remote Nevada location here. I'm off Fort Churchill Road here by the Carson River near Dayton or Silver Springs, Nevada. Um, and we often go out places like this alone by ourselves, just the family in this one vehicle. And while they say you should never go alone, you should always take a friend, we don't necessarily follow that rule all the time. And you know, I think that's okay. I think that, you know, what that encourages you to do is to be prepared, to know where you're going, know the limits of your vehicle and yourselves, and um, be prepared to have an adventure. So having an adventure doesn't mean being reckless. And so one thing that we wanted to add to this vehicle to make sure that we were prepared for things that can happen when you're off on your own in the middle of nowhere by yourselves with one vehicle, is to have a winch, some way to recover yourself. And so now we have that. And one of the things that you need to consider when putting a winch on a vehicle is you gotta have a bumper usually to make that winch able to mount to the vehicle. You don't have to have a bumper per se, you can get a hidden winch mount that'll just put it behind the license plate basically and pull it out there. Um, but if you're gonna have a winch, you really need to have a recovery point, a rated recovery point. Now the hooks that come on the bottom of these trucks are not rated recovery points. Those are tie down points for when they're towing or shipping the vehicle. I decided to go with this product. This is uh, the worn semi-hidden winch bumper for Toyota Tacoma. And it is just what you see here. It's just this black part that replaces the little buck tooth thing that comes on the front of these Toyota Tacomas. Um, it includes this bull bar, which I didn't really like when I saw it at first, but it's grown on me now that it's here. If I decide I don't like it, I can totally cut it off. Um, but it does offer a little bit of protection for the front of the vehicle. Um, and since the hood is so big on this vehicle, as I've ever mentioned in other videos, uh, it's you need it. You really need it. So it doesn't have a bunch of holes in it for lights. I don't really plan to mount any lights on it. I just wanted these two solid recovery points here on the front that were easy to reach and high off the ground so that we could recover to it or use a, a, shock, a pulley to um, double the power of the winch. The winch I got is the Warren VR Evo 10S. It's a standard duty winch. It comes with synthetic winch line. This particular model comes with synthetic winch line and a hook on the front. The synthetic winch line is nice because it's a lot lighter and a lot safer than, than a steel rope would be. It doesn't store energy. It doesn't has a lot less um, ability to snap back, has a lot less inertia if it does get moving. Um, so this will allow us to either, number one, recover a friend should they get stuck, recover ourselves should we get stuck, and just have that kind of peace of mind knowing that um, if we, when we're going out here, if something does happen, we at least have this one thing to get ourselves out or honestly make it easier for somebody else to get us out. So we're going to install this. It's an easy install, and I'll give you a step-by-step -step starting now on how to get this mounted up to your Toyota Tacoma. So the first thing you gotta do is get the main grill off of the truck. And there's a, a number of screws, <clears throat> like a number of screws like this, and then there's a number of these little plastic Rotini clip things. And as you can see, you just stick a flat head under there and pull it out and then pop it off. And if you take enough of those off, then boy, that front thing will just come right off in your hands. If you have a license plate, you're gonna to need to remove that and come up with a different solution because it ain't going back on. Uh, now you need to remove some of this stuff in the front. Now, you don't have to take it off completely because it's attached, you just need to get it off and loose. Another little plastic valence thing with more plastic clips that you're gonna lose or break. But zip ties will do the same thing, honestly. Uh, there's some bolts for this as well, as well as for the thing that's underneath it that you need to take off. Ooh, more clips. How about that? Don't worry, there's more. Some of these uh, bolts are hard to get to, but just use an extension and, and uh, they'll come right out. This is a little cross member piece. I can't remember if this goes back in. I think it does. I didn't get video of it, but just remove those clips and you're gonna break them, so use zip ties when you come back. More plastic covers need to be removed with bolts. Uh, this thing, if you take enough of those 
clips off, you can just rip it right, rip it right off. And you don't want to necessarily ruin the plastic thing that it's attached to, but this thing itself, you're going to break some of those tabs. You just heard one fall, but don't be too concerned about that because you're just going to throw it away. Be good to wear gloves so you don't rip your hands up doing this, but you know, don't be bashful. Just give it a good yank. This plastic thing, I have no idea what it is. Some sort of impact absorber, I guess. Um, this has little retaining clips, and every time you, yeah, they just reclip on the top. So you clip them on the bottom, and then it, they clip back on the top. It's pretty frustrating, but if you use enough enough force, it'll it'll come off. Again, don't worry about saving this thing because you're throwing it out. Oh my God, fast forward. Oh, there we go. That thing there is an impact absorber, aluminum impact absorber. It comes off with um, three bolts on each side of the front. Just get those all off. I don't know what I did before these impact drivers. I wasted a lot of my life on a ratchet, I tell you what. So this thing's gonna come off, but it's got wings on both sides, which prevents it, prevents it from coming out this hole. Yeah, there's the solution. Just cut one end off with a saber saw. Yeah, if you do that, you can bend it, and it'll just come right out and throw it away. These are the extensions off the frame horn that um, that thing bolts to. And there's three bolts, and you just pull them all off, and they come right out. And you throw those away as well. There's one on the other side too, but I didn't show it. Now you can get the the bumper up on a jack like this and just sort of maneuver it into place. It's got to go through all that plastic there. So it just kind of takes a little bit of maneuvering. And then it goes straight in. It just goes straight in. You need to take these sort of air guards or whatever to get to the bolts that the bumper attaches to. Just comes off with more of those clips. So from there, you can keep pushing the bumper in until it goes over the frame bolts at the end of the frame rails. Just use a little force, boom. Now you can put the nuts on. Of course, you gotta do both sides, as usual. These, uh, you're gonna be reusing the nuts that came off initially, I believe. Yeah, I'm not turning my butt to the camera. Unless you wanna see that, post up in the comments. Yeah, I couldn't get an impact. Oh, well, I, I guess I could get an impact in there. Now you're living. It's really hard. It's brutal watching myself struggle with all this stuff. So frustrating. Okay, so this last piece of plastic goes all the way across underneath the bumper. And they said in the instructions that you only had to notch it, but you definitely have to cut it off. Or, or I guess you could leave it looking like a big fat lip on the bottom of your car. Uh, you ever wonder what those things are? The ends of that actually come right out, but the bumper has these braces that uh, tie into this additional point on the truck to allow the bumper to be strong enough to pull the vehicle. Uh, the last step is they add a fifth a fourth bolt for the frame um, but since there's not already an insert there, you have to you have to put that spacer, two washers as a spacer, and then finagle that 
nut onto it while turning the front. I struggled with this quite a bit because you can't get your hand in there. I almost uh, tried to make one of the kids come help me stick their tiny hand back in there, but they were not around. So now we're uh, attaching and removing more pieces. Yeah, we're removing more pieces here for access for the winch. These things, you just need to loosen them and sort of move them out of the way. You don't have to take them all the way off. And this is the uh, brake line cooler or the power steering or cooler or the transmission cooler or something, I forget. But another hard to reach bolt and you just need to loosen it a little bit and move it out of the way. Now we get the winch out. This is the Warren VR Evo 10S. Comes all packaged up nice with pretty much ready to go. I don't think I had to attach anything to it. These are the nuts that secure it to the winch right through the bottom of the bumper. And I used a little tape to keep them from falling out when I turned it over and dropped it in. That tape probably just falls away and blows out in the wind. Yeah, you can see me catch my hand on this. Right there, that hurt a lot. Now you just move the winch so that you can access all the, the bolts um, and thread them on in there. This can be kind of a time consuming step. And crank it all down, torque it to spec, whatever that may be. Now here are the bolts for the fair lead. The winch actually comes with this nice aluminum hose fair lead to run the winch cable through. Um, all the hardware is included as well. Crank it down and good to go. So, as you can see, it was pretty easy to get this mounted up and once you got it on there, it doesn't weigh that much. It's about 120, 130 pounds. Altogether, I weighed the individual components before I put them on there. So it's, it's not nothing. It's a definitely a 100% weight gain because you don't really take much off. You take a couple of really light things off. So maybe five pounds of stuff total comes off and then 120 goes on. Um, but that's just the price you pay, really. So if you have any questions or comments, put them down in the comments down below there. And if you wanna see what happens if we end up having to use this, you better subscribe. Thanks for watching and happy trails.